Hey there, Small Master D coming at you with another video, this time about my thoughts on the new Old Country Barbecue Pits uh, insulated offset smoker. Now, a lot of people think of this smoker as being like the generation two of the Brazos. And I have covered the Brazos before in my videos. Now, um, that was some time back a while ago, sort of earlier in my YouTube career, but I am very familiar with the Brazos, uh, and I wanted to take a look at this new smoker and just sort of analyze what I thought about it, its strengths and weaknesses, and, you know, uh, compare it a little bit to uh, the 1957 from Workhorse Pits, just because uh, you need a point of comparison. So I have the things that I like, the things that I kind of like and kind of don't like, and the things that I just don't like. Uh, one of the first things that I like a lot is the taller stack. So um, the thing about Old Country Barbecue Pits is a lot of them seem to have sort of like a short stack. Uh, now, they seem to have tried to make up for this by having it, you know, in the middle of the chamber. And uh, I'm not even sure if they did that just so that they would have more stack from it starting there. And I've kind of thought, I don't know this for sure, but I've kind of thought that maybe that was all a shipping sort of thing, like how much space they had in a shipping container uh, is, is sort of how they determined how tall their stack was it gonna be. Now, it appears that they've overcome this issue by having it as a bolt-on stack. And I imagine, though I don't know, that maybe they bolt on the stack when it gets to wherever they're shipping it to. Um, and, you know, if, if you have received one of these shipped to you and had to bolt on the stack yourself, uh, please comment below just so we know. Um, but that is the process, I believe, that is the same for the Aaron Franklin pit. Uh, so it seems to be maybe more standardized practice and a good one that I congratulate on Old Country bar uh, Barbecue Pits for, for adopting. Another thing that I like is uh, the front wheels that they've added instead of just making it a stand. Now I know that they already added that to the newer version of the Brazos DLX. So um, there's that, but uh, it's a good addition anyways. Um, I also like uh, the damper handle for the stack. So I think that it looks classy, looks good. It looks like it'll work rather well. So good on them for that, all right? I like the threads on uh, the grease drain. Now, I can't remember whether they did that on the uh, original Brazos or even the Brazos DLX, but it's good. Uh, I imagine that means that you can probably get on a valve and uh, you know screw it on there. So uh, that is a good thing, in my opinion. Uh, the last thing that I like, um, that I just plain like on this smoker is the pull bar. I think it's situated well as being part of the smoke collector. Um, yeah, you know, pull the thing around, uh, probably give you some good leverage on, on those back wheels. Back wheels themselves, you know, is something that I like. Of course, um, you know, the wagon style wheels, the larger the circumference, uh, the more mechanical advantage. Now, as far as like wagon wheels go, they're not the biggest out there but uh they'll do the job now let's get into the things that i like and don't like talking of the smoke collector i do like that they have a smoke collector on this uh it's the first smoke collector i believe on any old country barbecue pits smoker so it's a welcome addition now what don't i like i don't like that it doesn't go across the entire chamber um you know i'm sure that they've seen several other smokers that have Smoke collectors, uh, Franklin Barbecue Pits, Workhorse Pits, Mill Scale, all of them go across the entire chamber. So why wouldn't they have made theirs in the same way? I don't know. When that hot air is crumbing across the chamber, if it hits against the wall, it's gonna bounce back, right? So you want it to not bounce back, but to flow in uh, and keep the airflow going for the chamber. So um, I'm a little confused as to why they did that. 
another thing that I like and don't like is the insulation on the firebox. Now, when I say that I like it and don't like it, um, I like insulation in general for fireboxes so that, you know, you keep the heat in there. Heat is a very important part of the fire process. It's one of the ingredients uh, and you need it to light your splits. So the more heat that stays in there, the better they're gonna light, uh, the better your fire is gonna be. Now, what don't I like about it? Uh, there's one thing that has to be parsed out, right? And that thing is whether this is a fully insulated firebox or semi-insulated. Now, the language that they have on their page for uh, Academy Sports says the words fully insulated, and it also uses the term double walled. Now, that brings us to a point of ambiguity, right? So fully insulated generally means there's actually stuff, insulative stuff, uh, between two walls as in a double wall. But usually when people say double wall, they are meaning air gap, right? So air is a very good insulator as well. Uh, there's other materials that trap air uh, that are some sort of fibers. Now, if you look at your house and it has that insulation, that's what I'm talking about, insulative stuff right? That is insulation stuff. Now, the insulation stuff insulates really well. Now, why would I be worried about the firebox being really well insulated? The thing about offset smokers and barbecue in general is that they work, it all works best with a little bit of inefficiency. In fact, that's where smoke comes from. If you had a fire that was completely efficient, you would have no smoke. You would have water vapor, carbon dioxide, and heat, and that's it. No smoke, right? So the thing about efficiency in a firebox is that if it's too efficient, it's hard to bring temperatures down in the chamber. Now, a lot of the offset smokers that have fully insulated fireboxes with insulative stuff in them are huge, right? They're 500 gallon smokers, they're 1000 gallon smokers. They need that insulation to make the heat go all the way throughout that huge chamber. This smoker is super small, <laughs> too small to have that much insulation, which is why I hope, I hope that it's only air gas. Um, if it's not, you know, uh, your temp you're going to, one, you're going to need to use really small splits, really thin splits on this thing, which isn't a problem, except that, you know, you're probably going to have to manually cut those down. Now, you might be able to find them somewhere, but you, it's possible that you're going to have to do a lot of work to get smaller splits, okay? Um, depending on how scarce wood is in your region, maybe that's a good thing. Uh, depending on how cold things are in your region, also could be a good thing. For, but for most people, um, I think that it's overkill, right? Especially if it's fully insulated. If it's air gap insulated, semi-insulated, I think that, you know, you could make a better case for it. So there's that side of it. Um, the other thing is that even if you do insulation, it doesn't mean that your the heat is going to last longer, that you're not going to have to feed the fire as much. That is a misconception, right? You have to feed the fire the same amount of times, just with smaller wood. So thinking, you know, hey, this is going to be so much better, not entirely, okay? It is better to some extent to have that ability to, to keep your fire lit, to not worry as much about it going out. Um, but in general, it could be problematic if you get the fire too hot, especially if it's fully insulated, getting the temperatures down can be a huge problem. Um, especially since you can't just open the firebox lid up because there is no firebox lid, uh, because there's no grill, because 
Uh, number one thing on the things that I don't like about this smoker is that the grill in the firebox is not a possibility. It is a dedicated smoker. Um, so, you know, no grill. Uh, the thing that I would, I would suggest would be to have a semi-insulated bottom of the firebox with the grill on top, okay? So a, a double wall there on the bottom, that will keep that bottom part very um, insulated so that you keep your heat there, but then you can still have the grill on top, still open a lid. Um, that is my preference. So that's one of the things that I don't like about this smoker. All right, so what don't I like? Um, I already mentioned that you can't uh, have the option for a grill in the firebox. Uh, so there's that. The other thing, the next thing, there's a few things. The next thing, what happened to the front shelf? Right there at the door. I mean, that's a thing for all the offset smokers for old country barbecue pits. It's not like they couldn't do it. It's not like it was, you know, something that needed to be getting rid of, why would they take that off? Um, you know, it's useful. It was, it was a good thing for all their other offset smokers. I, I just don't see it. Why? Why wouldn't they have that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, um, another thing, this thing is a little bit on the small side. It is a little bit smaller than the Brazos. So I did the calculations for what they have on the Academy website. Size of the main grate is 595 inches squared on this insulated offset smoker. Now the Brazos was 639 inches squared. So that is smaller by 44 inches squared. So it's a little bit smaller. And the Brazos was already on the small side for an offset smoker. Not like super small, I'm not talking about that, but in, you know, just smokers in this class, in this price range, it's a little bit on the small side. Part of that is it has an 18 inch diameter, which, you know, there are some out there with a 16 inch diameter, uh, some made by Horizon, um, by Yoder, uh, those companies have a smaller diameter barrel, um, but they jump up to 20 inches. So it was kind of like between small and medium, which kind of makes it medium small, I guess. Uh, so, you know, if that helps you for reference. Uh, and for more reference, I'm going to throw the Workhorse Pits 1957 uh, in the mix. The 1957 is the smallest offset smoker offered by Workhorse Pits, and it is still significantly larger on its main grade than this Generation 2 Brazos fully insulated offset smoker. The 1957 has 684 inches squared for its uh, main grate. So as you can see, um, you know, almost 100 inches squared more than this uh, insulated offset smoker from Ola Country Barbecue Pits. So, um, and then that kind of brings me to the next thing, the price. So, the price isn't good enough, right? It's not cheap enough, I, I don't think, to make it worthwhile in this space, right? So the idea behind this, this insulated smoker was they're gonna step up the game of the Brazos in this generation too, and to compete with some of these other smokers. But I don't think that they're giving the consumer enough to make it worth it to, to get this smoker rather than something like the 1957, okay? That doesn't really suffer as much from uh, some of the issues that this one has. Like I said before, I don't think the insulation is necessary enough and good enough to make it worthwhile, right? The price difference between these two smokers is only a few hundred dollars. Um, you know, maybe that's enough to make the difference for some people, but uh, the, the base price for the 1957 is 2190. 
right? So that's almost, you know, $300 more. Uh, when you get up to this amount of money that you're spending on a smoker, $300 extra uh, isn't, isn't a whole lot, right? Now, if you add on shipping, you know, some people might have this thing locally at their academy sports. They have to figure in taxes, right? To how much you're gonna be putting on. If you get something like the workhorse pits uh, shipped to you, you don't have taxes, but you do have to pay shipping. So those kind of things are, you know, split a few hairs trying to figure out which is more. Uh, but when you come up to this level, you know, you have to think which is better, okay? What is worthwhile for what I'm spending? And I don't know that they've given enough value for price. Now, if this was a, a couple hundred dollars less, if say this was uh, as much as the DLX, um, you know, maybe it would be a slightly different conversation. I don't know. But uh, when your whole brand, Old Country Barbecue Pit's whole brand is, uh, you know, the bargain offset smoker, I don't know that there's enough bargain here to make it worthwhile. And those are my thoughts. Uh, you may disagree with me, you know, uh, maybe you do think it's totally worthwhile. Uh, but before you say that, you know, definitely look into some of the op other options, like in my episode in uh, Competitors of the Workhorse Pits 1975. You have offerings from uh, people like Bell Fabrications, from um, Blue uh, Smoke Smokers that you'd have to take into consideration. But if you want to talk about that, you know, put it in the comments below. Uh, thank you all for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And as always, go out there, get outside, get your smoke on, y'all.